Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Sometimes that's how I feel when I get calls from friends and family for tech support. Hi guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to Snack Time. In this video, we'll be covering Rust Desk. Rust Desk is an open source alternative to commercial software like TeamViewer and AnyDesk. The very first part of my video, we will be diving into Rust Desk so that we can see if it can fit your needs. Afterwards, I'll be walking you through setting up your own relay server and ensures that the only people that are connecting to your friends and family's computers would be you. To do this, we will need a computer running Docker and Portainer. If you've never set up your own server before, take a look at my previous video where I talk about building your own Linux-based cloud server. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, let's go ahead and check out Rust Desk. So right out of the box, Rust Desk is pretty easy to use. It's your basic remote support software. So we're going to be supporting dear old grandma here. And when she runs the program, she'll be presented with an ID and a password. When she does require remote support, she'll only need to give you this ID number. As I'll show you something that's really cool with Rust Desk. When you go to connect and you put her number in, it'll first ask you if you have the password. However, if you don't, on grandma's screen, you can see that it's prompting you to connect and she can simply click accept or accept and elevate, which will give you administrative access. Once she accepts, you can see that we have access to her computer. You can go full screen. You can also do scale adaptive, which will make it so that it's, it just adapts to the size of your screen that you currently have. And it's pretty snappy. Now that we're connected, let's look at all the things that we can do while we're connected. So you can request elevation, which will give you administrative rights. Looks like you can transfer files back and forth. This will ask for additional permission from the user. We see that uh, it's being asked to, re you know, requesting additional access. So we hit accept. And now we can transfer files back and forth. Other options that we have are TCP tunneling, restart remote device, insert lock. Uh, we can also block uh, user input. We can switch sides, which I believe will essentially broadcast our screen to, to grandma's computer. After that, we have several different display options, including quality, codec, resolution, and some other things that will affect your user experience. Other options are keyboard inputs. And lastly, we also have a text chat that we can use to communicate back and forth. It'll allow grandma to communicate with you as well. Or you can do a voice chat. These are all really basic things that most remote software is capable of. Now say we didn't want to require grandma to have to run this program every single time she needs support. We can do it on a more persistent basis. So when you print, run the program, you'll click install over here. And this will run you through an installation process, which will set up Rust Desk as a service. So that grandma does not have to execute the program every single time you want access to her computer. To demonstrate that, we see that Rust Desk is not running in the taskbar. We just have the icon up here. But if we go to our computer, we can click Connect here. And on her machine, it's requesting access. So this does give you the ability to have unattended access, especially if you know the password. If you didn't want to have to deal with the randomly generating password, you could also come into settings, go under security, and you can set a permanent password that does not change. On one final note, you can set up public and private keys to be distributed between client and server. However, we will not be covering that in this video, but that would encrypt the connections. 
Now that we have the basics covered, I'm going to show you how to build your own relay server so that all of your remote traffic will go through your computer instead of someone else's. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and set up my subdomain so that I can point all of my clients to a name instead of an IP address. For this, I will be using my Namecheap and my Sinhao domain. I'm going to create an A record and I'm going to call it Rust Desk. I want to point it to the same IP address of my server and I accept that. Now let's find the files that we need. But I'm going to start, do a search for something specific. I'm going to do a search for Rust Desk, GitHub, Docker, Compose. If I click on this file, this will give me the Compose file that I need to put into Portainer. Unlike some of my other videos where I've used Nginx to process all of my data, I am going to allow this one to put ports out uh, straight onto the internet instead of going uh, through Nginx. It's just much easier to do it this way. And there's really no benefit to running it through Nginx since this does not have a web interface. But obviously it'll make some changes here. So let's go ahead and copy this raw file. So we click on the copy raw file button. So once we're in Portainer, I do want to create a volume for Rust Desk because it does need some persistent storage. So in case we ever update Rust Desk, we won't have to re-add any of the settings. Let's go to Volumes and go to Add Volume. And I'm just going to call this Rust Desk and create that volume. Now that we've set up our volume, let's deploy Rust Desk using Stacks. So let's click on Stacks on the left. Let's click Add Stack. Let's give our stack a name, Rust Desk. I know, very original. And let's paste this information into here. We're going to make some additional changes to this so that it uses our volume that we just created and also it's going to use our server URL. So I made my server URL rustdesk.sinhow.com. I'm going to go ahead and update this example to Sinhow. You'll see that the volume it wants to use is dot dash data, but I want to use my own volume that I just created. So I'm going to replace this right here with Rust Desk. And if we keep scrolling down, you'll see at the bottom here, there's another one. We need to update that one. Call that Rust Desk. And in order for it to recognize and use my existing volume that I created, I am going to need to add another line at the very bottom of this Docker Compose file. So we're going to hit enter right after this last line here. And we're going to backspace to the very beginning of the line. This is where I'm going to tell it about my volumes that are already created. So we're going to type in volumes, colon, then enter then hit tab and then type in the name of your volume. In our case, it was Rust Desk, colon, then enter and tab once more, external, colon, space true. And the only thing this last couple lines are doing is just telling it that we already have an existing volume that we want to use and it's called Rust Desk and here's where to find it. I find it to be a lot easier to manage my volumes through a portainer rather than trying to figure out where it's put it on the host machine. Let's scroll down and click on deploy the stack. And in a couple of minutes, you'll see that you have successfully deployed it. Let's go ahead and check out our Rust Desk. You can see that both the Rust Desk server and the Relay server has been configured and is operating normally. Now we just need to run our client. I'm going to open a new tab. I'm just going to do a quick search for Rust Desk Client. I'm going to click on this very first one here. Once we're here, we can see that Rust Desk supports a whole bunch of different operating systems. However, the only one that we really care about right now is Windows. Let's go to the GitHub repo link here. Before we scroll past this warning, I will take a minute to point out that scammers do like to use this software as well. 
So make sure that the person that you're giving the software to understands that and realizes that nobody will ever ask them for their information or try to get into their computer. By running your own server, this does help mitigate that risk a little bit since the scammer would have to be connected to your server in order to connect to their machine. So let's scroll down and find the Windows executable. It's this one right here, I believe. Let's click on that guy. We're gonna go ahead and download him. So when you run the client, the first thing you're gonna notice is that it's telling you to set up your own server, which we already have. So let's tell the client where to connect to. We click on the three periods here, right next to the ID. And then we're gonna network. And for our ID server, let's type in our restdesk.sinhow.com. We'll hit apply, success. All right, and we're gonna go back to home. We can see that our connection is good. We are ready to go. So now I'm going to flip over to grandma's computer, who's anxiously awaiting for you to provide her some tech support. Over on grandma's computer, we went ahead and downloaded the client and we renamed it to something she could understand, like remote support. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Down at the bottom, we noticed that it is saying that it's you know, to connect to your own server because we haven't configured it to connect our relay server. This is something you will have to do, but you only have to do it once. So we'll go to settings, we'll go to network. We'll use the same server, restdesk.sinhow.com. And we'll hit apply and we'll close out settings. We're ready to go. This includes the server installation of the software. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If not, I'll see you in the next one.